Let's get your initial reaction overall to the jobs numbers. We had Carl Rickadama earlier on saying lukewarm. What do you make of them? So I read this jobs report as a good one. I see a lot of positives, not positive everywhere, but there is a lot to celebrate in this report. Uh, and so uh, overall numbers, top line numbers were a little lower than what was expected, both in terms of number of jobs created and also particularly the wages are not growing as fast as they had been recently. Yeah, so let me start with the payroll numbers. So it's true that the payroll gains came in under expectations, but I want to stress these are good numbers, especially as far as we are into an expansion. Uh, for several years, economists have looked at these numbers and said they are higher than what we need to su sustain the solid labor market that we see. So I know this month wasn't what we were looking for, but, but it's good. Now, you asked about wages, and I will say that is the one piece of disappointment that is in this report. We, it's not just a disappointment, it is a puzzle. So we saw the wage gains drop down a little bit for the whole year of 2019. And frankly, we have been expecting, again, for some time, these, this wage growth to pick up. And it, it is a puzzle. We've had unemployment at or below 4% for all of 2019. That's a level that many people think should be putting pressure on the, the labor market. And we just, we don't see it. So, Dr. Salma, I mentioned the rule that's named after you because you created it, and it's being used by various parts of the Fed now as an indicator of recession, the SOM rule. Uh, according to that rule, as I understand, there's not a chance of recession right now, given where we are for various factors. But now may be the time we start to think about what would happen if there were a downturn, how would we react to it. And I talked to Larry, uh, I'm sorry, Larry Summers, the former Treasury Secretary, yesterday about that and his plan to have sort of an automatic fiscal intrusion. This is what he said. Olivier Blanchard and I were talking about when we discussed uh, semi-automatic stabilizers was the idea that rely, rather than relying on Congress um, to organize itself to act each time there's an economic downturn, we should do more with rules that would lock in changes in spending. As I understand it, Dr. Salm, this is directly related potentially to the Salm rule because that is one of the triggers that people think they might use for this sort of rule that Larry Summers described. Is he right? Yeah, I agree with Larry here. And I, I want to go further on this. The reason the Salm rule exists, the reason I need to think about when are we in a recession, was exactly because I had worked on a policy proposal to push out direct payments to households as soon as the recession happens and to have Congress commit to those before we get to the point we need them. And I want to just add on, so the policy proposal, and there was a volume called Recession Ready that came out in May of this year, Washington Center for Equitable Growth, the Hamilton Project at Brookings, they work together on this volume, and in addition to the direct payments that I propose, there were many ways to add automatic stabilizers, for example, make infrastructure investments automatic, and to strengthen the ones we have, like unemployment insurance. So I think this is an excellent idea. I think now is the time. So again, we're not in a recession right now. If you just look at the unemployment rate, if you just look at the changes that we've been seeing, which are none, it's flat, we've got time, especially over the next year. This would be a wonderful thing for policymakers to focus on because, frankly, we are never ready for a recession, and they are very destructive. It makes good sense, at least to me. I'm not an economist, make good mm -hmm. sense. But is it really doable in Washington? You're in Washington. You've spent time in the government. Congress doesn't like to give up its discretion. And basically what it's been saying is you would set a rule now that down the road you don't get to say whether you do this or not. Is that likely the lawmakers, whether Republican or Democrats, are going to give up that? So a few points on this. First of all, no one wants or likes a recession. So policy that is going to help make a recession less severe shows that we're thinking ahead. This is very good. This is good policy. And recessions and stimulus payments have gone out in the past two recessions. Congress got together and did it before. Doing that ahead of time, there are real payoffs to them. It tells people now, it tells businesses now, that we are committed, we have your back when there is a recession, and we can move fast. 
So I think there's those benefits. One other thing that I put in my proposal, because what right. you're asking, this is important. Congress wants to be able to show they are acting in the moment as well. Right. And it could be that the legislation is put in place and then there's still a vote. Like they still uh, have control over it. Now uh, we go. 